Fasted Zone 2 runs are hyped as the ultimate fat burning hack and I swore by them. I would run up to 30 kilometers fasted, convinced I was burning tons of body fat. But over time, I discovered the hard truth. Fasted runs can limit performance, delay recovery, and worst of all, accelerate muscle loss. And for us runners over 40, muscle is everything. It's your metabolic engine. It's your fat burning machinery. So are Fasted Zone 2 runs really helping you or quietly sabotaging your fat loss goals? In this video, we break down the science, bust the myth, and uncover key nuances to give you a clear strategy for maximizing fat burn without compromising your performance. Let's get into it. On the surface level, yes it does. A 2016 meta-analysis published in the British Journal of Nutrition examined 27 studies and confirmed that running in a faster state does indeed burn more fat by around 0.27 grams per minute compared to running fueled. Why does that happen? Well, overnight fasting lowers insulin and elevates non astrophyte fatty acids, meaning your muscles get easier access to store fat for fuel. Additionally, research from 2020 shows faster training spikes signals like AMPK and fat CD36, which directly enhances your muscles' ability to burn fat. But here's the catch. While fasted runs clearly boost fat burning, it doesn't mean that you actually lose more body fat. Here's where things get tricky. Another meta-analysis published in the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science in Sports analyzed 16 randomized controlled trials where all aerobic exercises were matched for duration and volume between a fasted and a fat group. The study found that despite the fasted group, burning significantly more fat during individual sessions, there was no extra reduction in body fat compared to the fat group. It turns out that total weekly calorie balance plays a bigger role in fat loss than whether you run fasted or fueled. Even the runners who fueled their workouts lost just as much body fat as those who trained fasted when they maintained a similar calorie deficit. Ultimately, total calorie balance matters more than whether you run fasted or fueled. So if fasted zone 2 isn't the magical solution, does that mean that fueled running is a better choice? Or is there still a smart strategic reason to occasionally include fasted zone 2 runs into your weekly routine? Yes, occasional fasted zone 2 runs can still have a place. Why? Because fasted zone 2 runs can serve as a powerful metabolic stimulus that activates AMPK and fat CD36. These enzymes and transport proteins signal to your body to become more efficient at using fat as fuel. These sessions are especially effective if only a few conditions are met. The fasted zone 2 runs are short, lasting about 30 to 45 minutes, and done no more than once or twice a week. In this context, these fasted runs help maintain your fat oxidation machinery without overly taxing your hormonal and muscular recovery systems, which is a huge concern for masters runners over 40. If you regularly do long fasted runs, it can lead to high cortisol levels, lower testosterone, loss of lean muscle mass, increased bone breakdown, and a higher risk of hypoglycemia. That's it. Science has shown us a very unique way to add a small amount of carbs before your runs that still maximizes fat burn without the negative effects we just talked about. But before we flip the script and see how you can get the best of both worlds, do you have a way to measure how much fat you're actually burning during your zone 2 runs? Here's the thing, just because the scale says that you're losing weight, it doesn't mean that you're actually losing fat. You could be losing muscle or even bone density, which for us runners over 40, that's the last thing you want. So how do you know if the weight that you're losing is coming from fat and not from muscle or bone that you can't afford to lose? That's where the sponsor of today's video comes in, the Hume Health Body Pod. It's the world's first portable body analyzer and it's been a complete game changer for me, giving me detailed insights into my body body fat percentage, all from the comfort of my own home. But it doesn't just stop there, it also categorizes your fat as either subcutaneous or visceral, so you know whether the fat you're carrying is just vanity fat under the skin or the more dangerous kind around your organs that impacts your health. Most smart scales on the market can't tell you the difference, but the body pod can. If you want to try it for yourself, you can use my code ENDURANCE LAB, all caps, no spaces, for 20% off, and it even stacks on top Hume's current sale to save you up to 50% off total. The code is only valid for 7 days, so don't wait. Use the link in the description. To burn the most fat and perform your best, it's not just about whether you run fasted or fueled. It's about understanding how your body uses energy. Even in a faster state, your body still relies on glycogen to power your zone 2 runs. Around 20 to 35% of energy still comes from glycogen, even when you're tapping into fat. Once muscle glycogen begins to run low, your body pulls from liver glycogen. And when that depletes, it shifts into a backup mode, breaking down muscle protein into amino acids to create glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. 
What's the problem with that? Well, muscle breakdown doesn't just slow recovery. It compromises the very lean tissue you need for strength, metabolic health, and long-term fat loss. So even when running faster, there's always a hidden carbohydrate cost. And if you're not fueling smart, it might be your muscles that pay the price. So how do you fuel smart for maximum fat burn and better performance? Studies by Horowitz and Cole found that taking just 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates less than 10 minutes before starting a zone 2 run didn't blunt fat oxidation at all. In fact, the first 20 minutes of fat burning was virtually identical to running fasted. What changed was performance, time to exhaustion increase, perceived effort decrease, and power output improved. This just-in-time fueling strategy is key because it avoids triggering a major insulin spike. The body uses the quick carbs to stabilize blood glucose and preserve liver glycogen without shutting down fat metabolism. Think of it as priming the engine. You're still burning fat, but with a bit of octane to smooth out the ride. Practically, that could be one energy gel, half a banana, or a small sports drink containing 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates. The key is to keep it quick, light, and very close to the start of your run, so your body uses it efficiently without blunting fat oxidation. You're not trying to load up, you're just giving your body enough fuel to prevent muscle breakdown, increase output, and help you go longer and stronger without derailing the fat burning benefits of your zone 2 session. Now, if your zone 2 run is under 60 minutes, that 20 to 30 grams of carbs before you run is all you need. But if you go beyond that, especially into the 90 minute or longer range, you'll want to top up with some carbs mid run. Here's a practical rule of thumb start fueling around the 45 minute mark and aim for 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates every 30 to 40 minutes thereafter. Why should you do this? Well, because you're starting your run in an almost faster state and your muscle glycogen stores alone can't sustain effective fat metabolism. The 20 to 30 grams of carbs you take before your zone 2 run helps stabilize your blood sugar and protects liver glycogen, but they aren't enough to meaningfully replenish muscle glycogen They have been depleted overnight. Once your run goes beyond 60 minutes, a steady drip of carbs helps prevent muscle breakdown, it shortens recovery time and preserves metabolic balance. It keeps insulin low. It also maintains steady blood glucose and it extends fat oxidation by sparing liver glycogen. Okay, I know this sounds totally counterintuitive. If you know how insulin works, you're probably thinking, isn't carbohydrate exactly what spikes insulin? So how can a steady drip of carbs keep it low during a run? Before you start roasting me in the comments, here's the science. During a prolonged zone to run, your body shifts its hormonal environment. Muscle contractions activate GLUT4 transporters, which allow glucose to enter muscle cells without needing insulin. This means that a 20 to 30 grams of carbs you take every 30 to 40 minutes raises blood sugar glucose just enough to spare liver glycogen. Without your liver breaking down glycogen into glucose and dumping it into your bloodstream, insulin remains low and fat oxidation stays high. So how do you combine the best of both fasted and fueling strategies into a smart weekly plan that maximizes fat burn without compromising performance? That's what we'll break down next. While I don't advocate for doing any zone 2 runs fasted, I know some of you will still want to push fat oxidation further by leveraging both fasted and fueling strategies. So here's how to combine these approaches into a flexible weekly strategy. Include 2 to 4 shorter zone 2 runs of around 30 to 45 minutes and one longer run of 90 minutes or more. For the shorter runs, you can go fasted once or twice a week if you want to maintain your fat adaptation signals or for a slight performance boost without shutting down fat burning. Take a microdose of 20 to 30 grams of carbs, no more than 5 to 10 minutes before your run. But it's during the longer run where fat oxidation really ramps up and that's where your fueling strategy matters the most because of a very crucial nuance. Studies by Romlin and colleagues show that maximum fat oxidation doesn't occur at the start of your run. It actually builds over time, often peaking between 45 to 65 minutes into a continuous zone 2 session. That's when your body begins to shift heavily towards fat as glycogen availability declines and intramuscular triglycerides step up to meet the demand. And if you remember just one thing from this video, let it be this. The duration of your zone 2 run has a far greater impact on fat loss than whether you're running fasted or fueled. And to take full advantage of this physiological sweet spot, you want to fuel just enough to avoid crashing, but not so much that you shut off fat metabolism. So how exactly do you fuel without shutting down fat Burn. I mentioned this earlier but it's worth highlighting again. Start your long zone 2 runs with about 20 to 30 grams of quick digesting carbs before you head out. Then around the 45 minute mark onward, take 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates every 30 to 40 minutes. And if you want to take your fat burning and performance gains to the next level, wrap this structure into an 80-20 polarized training model by layering in one high intensity session each week. Something like a Norwegian 4x4 interval workout or a 30 to 40 minute tempo run in zone 4. This 
80-20 approach anchored by a zone 2 base improves VO2 max, enhances metabolic flexibility, and ultimately creates a highly efficient fat burning engine that holds up strong even as you age. So to sum it all up, you don't have to choose between fat burning and performance. With smart fueling, you can have both. Small, well-timed carbs keep your performance and fat burning engine raving on high. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Has this shifted your thinking about how you approach your zone 2 runs? Have you been going into your runs faster or fueled? And will this new understanding of fat oxidation, insulin, and performance change how you train going forward? Drop a comment below and let me know if this was something you already knew or did a particular nuance surprise you. Let's keep learning from each other in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.